Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and thank you for joining us. Today's broadcast, we're going to be talking and actually asking some questions of each other. And we're going to be doing that in just a few minutes. Before we do that, though, we uh, just wanted to welcome anybody who is watching this on the replay. And just to give you a, a little idea of how this works, if you've never been on one of these broadcasts before. Hi, Jamie. What we do is, uh, uh, if you're watching this on the replay, you're going to see underneath on the notes here, it'll say from zero, zero to something or other. Um, we are doing news and updates. And then afterwards, underneath that, you're going to see from this time to the end, we'll be doing the questions. Hi there to Gabriella and also to Jody. So that is just so that if you don't want to see the news and updates, we're extended family here and we support one another doing various things so we like it we like at the front end just to make sure that we're up to date with everybody and as far as possible and uh, just make sure they've got the support they need if they need any so that's why we do it that way because our regular viewers are really important to us but we always welcome new ones so if you're watching and just ghosting in other words that you're watching the program but you don't need to um actually speak if you don't want to, you don't need to join in. We absolutely welcome that. If you do have a subject you'd like me to talk about at any time, please write to me at dearmamasal at gmail.com and I will do my best to um, do something around that subject or something close to that subject for you. And where possible, I'll let you know when I'm going to do that. All right, that's got that one done. So how is everybody this evening? We're going to be doing some questions this evening because I thought it was time that we had a little bit of a personal update on things, and I thought that would be a good idea. So if you are the sort of person who likes to take notes, you may want to make sure you've got a pen and uh, a something on which to write. I'm not going to tell you what it needs to be, or even you know, your, your phone or your laptop or something where you can actually answer those questions quickly or at least write the questions down and maybe deal with them later. I know some of you like to do these sort of things in depth. And so before we do, I'm just trying to think what news we have. I know that we missed a birthday uh, and I forgot to mention it uh, at lunchtime today owing to the fact that I was uh, busy on something else. But um, I know that it was Amy's birthday yesterday, and I clean forgot to mention that. So that is important to know. And for those of you who are uh, Dear Mama Sal followers from a long time, tomorrow is our sixth anniversary. And then on Sunday is Beth's birthday. So those are the birthdays. We had Laurie's birthday, Lolo's birthday earlier in the week on the 22nd. So some of you probably saw I put up a note on that one. And today, actually tomorrow, as well as being the anniversary of Dear Mama Sal's launch, it's also, for those of you who know Dougie, it's also his birthday. So I'm sure you'll all want to wish him a happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> He's out of town. That's why we couldn't have our usual birthday dinner this week. But uh, we, we decided we're going to do it in September because we're not stuck on dates. We're very flexible on that sort of thing. And really, that's one of the things I was talking about at lunchtime today is that if you, if you want to have a happier life, be more flexible. You know, things don't have to happen exactly when, when they're meant to. They can happen another time and be just as effective, if not more so. Mm. So, Jamie, any updates? while we have you here. And Gabriella, any updates? Yeah, it's six years already, Jamie. Isn't it amazing? Um, <laughs> 10.30 tomorrow evening uh, will be the time. That's when <laughs> Benji hit the button. <laughs> I don't know why I remember it so well, um, because he was actually, you know, it was almost like an afterthought. It was like, Oh, before I go, <laughs> we need to do something. And I, just, I always remember that. And I said, yeah, honey, whatever. <laughs> and he said, where's your laptop? And I said, well, right here. And he said, fine, sign in. And I did. 
And he said, okay, um, we need a name. Some of you have heard this story a number of times, but I love to keep telling it because it was so cute. We need a name. For what, honey? Now, for what I'm doing, we need a name. It's like people are going to write to you. What are we going to call this? Um, and then he said, you know, everybody calls you Mama Sal. Uh, so why don't we just put Dear Mama Sal as the name of it? And I went, whatever. Because <laughs> I had no idea what he was doing. I'm very, very... Uh, open about that I really had no idea what he was doing and then he went flip flop flip flop flip flop <laughs> and he said there you go and I said there I go what and he said you're now a YouTuber and I don't mind telling you um <laughs> that I, I I said a few choice words because I had no idea what that meant um I didn't quite honestly I I, I wasn't quite sure what a, a vlog was either because he'd say things like, do you mind if I vlog? And I go, whatever. And, but, you know, then he'd start talking and, and I'd start talking back to him. And he'd go, no, I'm vlogging. And I go, whatever. I, I just didn't know what it was. And so, yeah, it does seem like yesterday. Jamie's saying it felt like yesterday we were on blog TV. Jamie, you go back a long way. Um, that was the very first platform on which we broadcast. And it, it does seem like yesterday, doesn't it? But we had some good times, very good memories on blog TV. We we laughed a great deal. Hi, Nana, good to see you. And so, you know, um, to me, it's like I am so glad we had that time because they are great. Hi, Kim. We, they are great memories for us all. And if we hadn't been around for this long, we wouldn't have those good memories. For those of you who weren't around in those days, um, we we, <laughs> we 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 definitely did laugh a lot. I must admit on that one. Um, but it is funny how over the years, you know, things have developed in different ways. So I'm I I'm glad to say that I'm still in touch with a lot of those people, even though they might not come onto the broadcast. I'm still in touch with quite a few. So I'm I'm to me it was it's a great blessing. So. Hmm. All right. So uh, anybody else got an update? Um, a birthday that I've forgotten or about to forget. Uh, I'm, I think I'm pretty good this week. Other than the fact I forgot to wish um, Amy a happy birthday when she was on at lunchtime. But other than that, I'll, I think I'll put on this week's birthdays. So yes, it's amazing how quickly six months, uh, six years has gone on Dear Mama Sal. I, I also was thinking how strange it is that we are about to hit, I think, 1,100,000 views. And, you know, it's just like, <laughs> whoever thought, right? <laughs> so it yeah, was good. Did any of you see the um, video on the houseboats? Well, the one, I, I forgot to take video of the second one, or I didn't take very much, I don't think. Um, so I just wondered if any of you saw those and had any comments on it. Uh, I know that somebody wrote to me and said um, they were, they, they could see my point about the risk management of, you know, it's fine when 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 the ramps are level, you know, like at high, t uh, at regular tide, they would be level. At High tide, they probably actually high tide, they'd probably be level. But you know, at low tide, there's a 15 foot drop. And I just was could think of all those months we have very heavy rain and slippery, and my balance is not as good. Oh, I don't need to actually, Nana. I don't need to. I have my own trailer. I, I know how I do in a trailer, and I've lived in my trailer, which is half the size of the one uh, and I can live in it very happily. But an interesting thing for those of you watching on the replay, uh, Nana is asking me how about renting a fifth wheel for a month? No, uh, I, to me, to me, I know I can do it. The question is, can I do it for a whole winter? Yeah. It's, you know, it might not be forever. I don't know. I'm going to be alive forever, right? I could be gone next year, Nana. So I don't think like that. I, I think, can I do it? Okay, Sakura, good to see you, honey. Thanks for popping in.
Yes, and it, it's interesting. <laughs> I I don't know about the rest of you, but you know that that short deck and then the drop into the river. It was just like yeah, not so much fun. And the other one, the the second one I saw was you know like a hundred thousand dollars more plus. Um, but you know you had to go outside to do the washing. The washing was in a cupboard, if you like. A, 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 um, a door outside. So there you needed to stand in the rain and, and turn your wash over. And I'm going, and plus the, there is the gap between the dock and the, and the houseboat. And I'm going, I know what would happen to my laundry. How many of you drop stuff when you take it, <laughs> when you take it from the dryer, I mean, from the washer to the dryer? Um, I, because I need to, I can't afford the, my big house on my pension. Kim, quite simple. Um, you know, I, it's it's just too much on a pension. It was fine when I was working, but it's, you know, it just is too much. Plus, I don't use very much of it anymore. You know what I mean? People, I, I find that I really only use my bathroom, my bedroom, and my kitchen. And, it, you know, and, and obviously, occasionally, I use my art room, but I don't necessarily feel you know if in downsizing and I, I also believe that that's what people are going to be doing um I believe people will be doing this a lot more I think I'm actually ahead of the curve here I think you'll find an awful lot of baby boomers will do the same thing because we've been there done that and we can you know downside yes Jody the, the guy the, the person I think it was a guy who put their lawn chair on the top on the roof you know and it was just like it looked quite quite dangerous to get up there but obviously a younger person than I am and it was funny when I went to the second one I didn't get it on camera because I you know that was a bit more hurried but when I went to the second uh, second one the, the one guy next to me next to the one I was looking at uh, had his fishing rod out and he was um, catching dinner Yes, and, and that's, you know, Nana saying that's why townhouses are so high now. Um, people can't afford houses. But, you know, the, the prices are still astronomical. And that's the scary part as well. So to me, and, and also the decision that I made, Kim, was do I want to go and live in um, – a one or two bedroom apartment. And I, I decided that would not be a good idea for me. I think I would hibernate and it, you know, I wouldn't be forced to see a lot of people. And I don't think that's going to be good for me. So what I wanted was a community. And uh, I thought about the sort of, now, you know, Nana lives in a community, but, you know, that that's a bigger place. And I didn't want that big. So it's like, you know, I had to look at what will work for me. And this is a very individual decision that everybody needs to make. And you must remember, I'm going to be 71 next week. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than your average bear here. And I really, you know, had to think long and hard about what do I want. And what I don't want is a lot of drama. What I don't want is a lot of stress. Um. But, you know, what I did want was to meet some new people in my life. And I thought probably you guys would like to meet some new people as well. Um, hmm. Thank you, Nanam. Is that for dear Mama Sal tomorrow or for me personally the week after? Actually, when is my birthday? <laughs> Next Thursday. Okay. So, you know, it's... Um, I, I've thought about this, and so far, I haven't seen anything that I like better than the fifth wheel. Uh, I think it'll be very challenging and so forth, but it's a new experience. And as I've said, you know, I, I made the discussion, I had the discussion about it recently where, you know, my realtor said, will you be happy in a fifth wheel? And, you know, it's like, I don't know if I'll be happy in a fifth wheel. I won't know until I go there. And if I find I'm not happy, I will put away enough money to be able to move to an apartment if I have to. Do you understand? I mean, so to me, this is like one step at a time. Anyway, so I 
I'm trying to remember who else. We saw Christy at lunchtime. And Christy, for those of you who are old time viewers like Nana and Jamie, um, Christy and Matthew uh, live in Northern California. And they, Christy was telling us that that fire near Reading is actually now 93% contained. That is such good news. Uh, it must have been so scary because it was actually bearing down on them pretty heavily at one point. So I am certain that we're very... I'm, my thoughts and prayers go out to anybody in Hawaii at the moment. That looks like that's pretty nasty out there. Do any of you have family or friends out there? I think I heard that... that um, the big island, maybe. I don't know that one of the islands had already had three feet of water. Yikes. When that comes rolling off any high ground, that's going to be, I mean, to, you know, that's scary stuff. And the other thing is, you know, when, when the earth is that deep in water, then any new water is just going to slide right off. And it's, a, it's scary to me. And the other thing is, you know, I, I guess Hawaii, they say, is the most isolated place in the world, right? It's the most difficult to get get to in many ways. And and on the other hand, very easy to get to, as I found out last year. So if any of you have got family or friends there on any of the islands, you know, let's uh, wish them well and tell them to be safe, not smart. I mean, to be smart and safe rather than, uh, you know... <laughs> challenge the elements. Can we talk Trump if you want to, Nanny? In the meantime, let me continue. Um, I'm just trying to remember who else was on at lunchtime where we heard updates. I don't think, Kerry wasn't doing too well, right? Your in-laws are staying with you, Kim? Uh, yes, Nana, but the question is now what happens? You know, I, I think I think they're in, you know what I mean? When, when his chief personal financial officer of the Trump organization gets immunity, that's about as close as you're going to get to him because the next closest step would be the family. And I think the chances of a family member turning on him are zero. Um, so I think that's as close as they're going to get. But it's also closer than probably they. I, I thought they'd get. I didn't think... I, you know, I didn't think Cohen would, um, yes, that's true, um, Jamie, thank you for reminding me. Also, Thailand, Laos, and, and India got hit with a bad flood as well. So, you know, there's no doubt about it. For anybody who doesn't believe in global warming, uh, they, they just need to see what's happening to our weather patterns. And it's not that... You know, India and Thailand and Laos haven't had floods before or even anywhere, but they're getting worse. And and that's the scary part. The heat is getting worse wherever you live. Um, and and so to me, it's like, I, I hope we're not past the point of no return. I fear that we may be. But... Um, Oh, believe you, Nana's saying she misses the sound of rain. I assure you, you'll get plenty of it coming pretty soon. <laughs> as long as we live where we live, Nana, we will not ever be without the sound of rain. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, not in my lifetime anyway. <laughs> so, you know, I'm quite happy that I'm not hearing the sound of it myself. <laughs> And California definitely needs the rain. I I really fear for California. I mean, it's like, it must be so scary down there. Uh, with the population ever growing and the water getting less and less, it, it must be so scary. I can, re I can remember living in Africa where water had, was scarce. And we, in the summer months, um, which were like, <laughs> you know, our winter was like summer here, but 
um, in the summer months, we had to reuse all our water. You know what I mean? You, 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 you used water to wash in or, or clean your teeth or whatever. Happy birthday for yesterday, Amy. I am so sorry I forgot to say that at lunchtime. Uh, I just want to make sure I say it now before I forget. <laughs> I don't know why I just clean missed to say it at lunchtime, and it, but that was my bad. I am sorry. Um, but anyway, we you had literally had to reuse your water, and you know I could I could normally get about three uses of water. You know, it, it's like you could use it to um, certain water you could wash in, and then water flowers with, and then others. You know, you you could. Um, you know, wash the dishes in and then you know, use it down the toilet or, you know, so it was really quite something to do. Yeah. So, Amy, did you have a wonderful day? That's what we wanted to ask you. And... Yeah, Nana's saying she doesn't understand why they allow travel to the places that are burning. Well, um, I, I, they won't let them very close to where it is actually burning. You know, they have a fire perimeter and they don't let anybody in. So I'm not sure what your concern is. Just the fact that they're, they're close to where the fire is. They wouldn't be allowed within the perimeter. Or if they if if they chose to ignore the advice of the fire marshals, but the smoke, yeah, well, it's you know that's a personal thing. People would would rather you know suffer with the smoke, uh, and you know, maybe it's the only time in the year that they get to see their people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay, let's take a time check at 22.30, uh, please, Jody. And uh, I wanted to just say that we are always delighted to have you join us. And I thank you for being here. Amy, I forgot that you were in hospital with Kim yesterday. That's right. I, wait, are you able to rebook that vacation you planned? My question would be, Nana, the same as you're saying you can't believe that people are going up there. Uh, I can't believe that people aren't getting out of it. You know what I mean? It's like, but who knows how long those fires are going to last? All right, Jody, could you please remind me to put up some thoughts and prayers for Kim and his heart condition? Yeah. You, the main thing is, Amy, to, um, to just know that, that, you know, you can take it one step at, the, at a time, right? Just, you know, when you change this diet, it 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 will become normal quite quickly and it's like anything else where you're forced to make a major change has anybody else had to have a major diet change because of health okay so you're planning to go in October instead. That's awesome. All right. So, yes, uh, you know, I think anybody will tell you when, when, it, when you have to make that change, it's amazing that you can. And, you know, Nana had to stop sugar and white bread. And, you know, I must admit that I, I realized that, you know, there's a reason why they came up with the George Foreman grill. You do know that, don't you? Hi, Isabel. Right? Um, the whole point about the George Foreman grill was that it took the fat and drained it away. So, so you know, you look at it and you go, we can, we can all learn different ways of cooking. And, 
I, to me, it's like, it's amazing how inventive you can get if you really want to. <laughs> so it's, um, and and we know it's, uh, has, yes, has anybody else tried that uh, keto diet? I was seeing something on it recently and I was wondering if any of you had ever tried it. And how difficult it is. Yeah. You know, so Jody's saying she had to change dramatically her, her diet w when she realized she had diabetes. And so, you know, the main thing I was taught was actually don't go on a diet. Don't see it as a diet. See it as a change of eating plan because if you go on a diet uh it is so easy to revert back but when you say okay i'm going to change my eating habits isabel how did you do it i mean what what are the main things if if you could say three things about it what what did you eat differently and what has it done for you <laughs> Amy's saying, we, we've gotten rid of the rest of the bad stuff this afternoon and we gave it to a very grateful, tall, skinny neighbor. <laughs> you can imagine. Whoa, Christmas. <laughs> yes. How many of you are watching your portions better than... I, I have probably cut my portions in half and so much so that when I do the Sunday meal... Uh, when I do the Sunday meal, I, I, I quite often hear Yvonne say, is that all you're having? I said, no, that's all I need. Uh, but if I need more, I will come back and get more. Because I realize now that it's, you know, when I pile up my plate like this, I'm going to eat this. If I just put half of that on, I probably will eat it, and that's enough. Some of you will know what I'm talking about in that, you know, just just more isn't necessarily better. The other thing, he's 200 pounds overweight. All right, so the thing that I would recommend is if you haven't got a fitness tracker, get one for him. And encourage him to get in 250 steps in an hour minimum. And, you know, if necessary, just stand up and take the extra steps to make it up to 250. Or, you know, make sure that he walks around the block. Um, but, you know, it's funny if you just say it's all you have to do is 250 steps for so many hours a day. Wow. Isabel saying no sugar of any kind, including pasta, bread, even with big medicine. I was always high sugar. Now my blood sugar is perfect. No, um, bon, 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 bonsoir. I guess we'd have to be bonsoir now. Isabel, um, your English is perfect. <laughs> really. Um, I think that's that's the difference that I feel is that uh, I know that I've, I've got to, not got to, I choose to put in whenever I can at least 250 steps an hour. And that keeps me at the bare minimum. You know, if I do more than that, I'm doing well for myself. Hi, Ty. <laughs> I hate it when my eyes are bigger than my belly. <laughs> yes, it, you know, it's there's so many, so many things that he, he just got lazy, Amy. All right, and, and is now paying the price, all right? And the amount that he eats is probably way, you know, this is the whole thing. If he starts exercising more, he will be allowed to eat more, you know what I mean? But until he gets his weight under control, how are things on Montana? Is it smoky from our forest fires?
Well, it's not that you can't ever eat out. It's you need to be really careful when you eat out. Yeah. So that's it. All right. So I'm going to redo the time at 30 minutes, please, Jody. All right. Here we go. I've got some questions for you guys that I thought it's time to ask ourselves some questions. So you have no need to answer these if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> but, you know, hopefully uh, if you choose to do that, it it would be great. By the way, if you're watching this on the replay or you're watching this uh, for the first time and, and we can't see you, for example, there should be a bell. I think it's just below me and to the, that, down there maybe, or down there. <laughs> I'm never quite sure which side it is. Is it one or two? There's a bell somewhere. Where is it? <laughs> Um, it, but if you if you hit that bell, it will tell you whenever we're going to do a live broadcast. Two. It's like this one, right? Because <laughs> it reverses. That's what I have to remember. Um, this is actually to my left. <laughs> but it's your right, which is the right side of the screen, which is where it is, of course. So you understand being a vlogger is very difficult because everything's in reverse. So it makes it very difficult. Down there, the bell, click on it, and it, you will then be advised when we're doing live broadcasts. If you are not a subscriber to Facebook and uh, blah, 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 Twitter, please follow Dear Mama Sal there because that's where I do most of the updates on people and thoughts and prayers and things like that go on to Facebook. I would like to say that this is an incredible feeling for me to be celebrating the start of the sixth year. No, seventh, we, we've, been, we've done six years now. And I have to say that I am most proud of the number of people that we have managed to help. And so to me, we've laughed a lot, we've cried a lot, we've, we've been through life together and, and that is a, a wonderful thing. So today I wanted to ask a series of questions and you can write them down, you can participate. By the way, if you choose to answer on the feed, I will read it. So can we do that? If you don't want me talking about it, then keep it to yourself. Um, but I, to me, I'd like to get some of these questions answered just so that we can give everybody an idea. Uh, hi, Kerry. Well, Jody, it's a pleasure to do what I do <laughs> most days, as you know. There are some days where I really don't know how I'm going to do it because I'm so tired or something or whatever. But, you know, as long as I can turn the, the, the um, system on, I seem to be okay. So first question. Here we go, everybody. And as I said, if you want to grab a pen and write these down, I really recommend asking yourself these sort of questions every now and then. What do you like most about yourself? What do you like most about yourself? <laughs> you know, I found that people are really good about telling me what they don't like, but I'd like to know what do you like about yourself? And let's see if anybody's got an answer to that. For some reason, people find great difficulty talking about themselves in the positive. Have you noticed that? And I haven't got one reply. Wow. Oh, there we go. Kerry. Kerry says her compassion. Um, Nana says, I'm honest, funny, and caring. Tyler says his sense of humor. Jody says her sense of humor. I love to make other people laugh. Helen, hi Helen, says her sense of humor. Yeah, I'd have to say I I I, I really like my sense of humor. Um, what else do I like about myself? I like my sense of humor and my commitment. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I believe I'm fairly good on my commitments. Not perfect. But I, I 
I like that in myself. You know, people know if I say I'm going to do something nine times out of 10, you know, I'm going to do it. Life has to get really serious for me to miss doing something I've said I'm going to do. And I will do it on time as well. How many of you are good about keeping your time commitments? Yeah. Now then, here's your next thing. If you could keep just one thing in your life, just one thing, if you could keep one thing, what would you keep? Yeah, both Jody and, and Nana say they're time-oriented people as well. So if you could keep one thing in your life, what would you keep? <laughs> Kim, Kim cheat. She says family. That's more than one thing. That is a collective thing. <laughs> oh, Kerry says her ability to see the positive. Yeah, what a great thing to keep, Kerry. Amy says if she could keep him, she would. She'd keep her husband. Nana says she'd keep her faith. Uh, Jody says she'd keep her husband. Helen says that she would like to keep her good health. I I really am conflicted. Hi, Nada. Good to see you, honey. I'm really conflicted on that. I'm trying to work out whether I, I – my first reaction was to keep my sense of humor. And then I wondered whether I should rather keep my good health. But I thought, you know, even if I didn't have good health, I'd still like to have a sense of humor. Does that make sense? So that's interesting. Yeah, I I, th I think my sense of humor helps me in a lot of cases. Okay, that's good. All right, this should be interesting. Let's see where everybody goes on this one. My favorite color is... Well, congratulations, Nada. I hope you found somewhere nice to settle. All right. So, what my what is that's the question? What is your favorite color? Kerry says purple. Helen says purple. Hmm. Midnight blue for Tyler. Purple for Jody as well. Isn't that interesting? Pink for Nana, dark blue for Amy, Tiffany blue. What on earth is, oh, Tiffany blue is like, yeah, I know what the color it is. It's like Burke's blue. We call it Burke's here. Okay, so it's that sort of light aquamarine blue, right? Yeah, turquoise is a, is a great color. So Tiffany blue is almost, almost this color here, right? So, yeah, okay. Then we, we then we got the right color. <laughs> um, it's a light aqua blue. And so, I was trying to think. I guess my favorite color it depends what it's for, though. Have any of you got? You know, it depends whether it's for walls in your house or clothes that you wear or. Yeah, exactly, Nada. It depends on my mood, right? It, it, I find that the colors I that are in my wardrobe are predominantly red, black, and white. And funny enough, in my kitchen now, red, black, and white. Um, you know, so that that's that's very different. the The colors on my walls are very neutral, except for this one. Um, and the colors, huh? You know, so I think it's, it's, it's very interesting. I, I know I got into the habit of black, red and white when I was 
being when I was a speaker because it was so easy to interchange those colors. You know, the red went with the white, the red went with the black, the black went with the you know it, it, that they all they all just I, I could mix, mix and match them very easily and carry a very small load of clothes with me at any one time. Um, so it's funny how when you when you do that for many many years which i did you sort of it hangs on and i still notice that when i open up my cupboard i've changed slightly i now have fire orange uh, as well as red <laughs> i don't have a lot of blue in my clothing although i paint with a lot of blue so you know that's interesting right Do you feel better in 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 one one color than another? And that that is what I I guess I wanted to find out, which is yeah. I you know something, Nana. I never liked wearing. Uh, I I really didn't wear orange a lot, except I noticed that when I did, people really remarked on it. And said, wow, that's such a great color on you. But it has to be that really vibrant one, you know, not just an orange orange. It needs to be that fire orange, as I call it. Um, it's almost a red orange. So, and so because I always seem to get a lot of feedback when I was wearing that, I got a couple more and I still get a lot of comments on it. Right. So Tyler says he looks, he looks slimmer in dark colors. Yeah, there you go, Ty. Um, you have your color hair is too light to wear orange. Gosh, well, could it be any lighter than mine? <laughs> and yet, funny enough, the orange still looks great. Isn't that interesting? So maybe it's it's more than just your hair color. Yes, I think complexion goes with it as well. Yeah. So how many of you prefer pastel colors to tie if you say yes to this so help me I will <laughs> yeah, burst out laughing mine isn't yellow I do wear yellow yeah I do I, uh, you know any any primary color looks good on me for some reason yeah the red black yellow um <laughs> blue straight so, hi, Erin. Good to see you. My hair isn't yellow. Okay. Is yours? <laughs> Mine hasn't been yellow for a long time. <laughs> you mean... Yeah, but I, I, I know what you mean. Yep. I must admit, though, that I think, anyway, it doesn't matter. Everybody's to their own choice, right? Do you think you need to have a certain personality to wear certain colors? That would be my other question. Uh, do you find that you are more vibrant in, in, in yourself? Right? Um, when you wear bold colors. And, you know, for some of you, you probably feel more peaceful when you wear pastel colors. So it's a very important thing to know about yourself and to know what you feel comfortable in. And that doesn't make it right or wrong. It just is about you. And that's what today is about. It's about do you know? Yeah, you're a pastel person and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. I would like to say that Peace and harmony is what you're about, Jody. So that would make a lot of sense to me. I'm a pretty fiery person. If you wear Hawaiian shirts all the time, that's right. Color variety is very open, right? But do you find yourself, you feel better when you're wearing those Hawaiian shirts? That's, that's what I want to know. Does the fact you're wearing a Hawaiian shirt sort of brighten up your day? And it's so, because you, there must be a good reason why you continue to wear them. I think a lot of people bring them back from Hawaii, but do they continue to wear them? 
What sort of paint do I use for my paintings? Uh, acrylic. But I use acrylic house paint for the paints that I use a lot of, Kim. I use acrylic house paint. I buy it by the gallon. Um, in other words, the blacks and the whites I use uh, by the gallon. And then the... Uh, the rest I buy smaller amounts of. Well, that's great, right? So Kerry's saying that she she lost Mike in the store today and found him because of his shirt, his Hawaiian short his shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So here's your next question, everybody. And remember, if you answer, then I'm I'm going to presume that it's okay for me to talk about it publicly. All right, so this is your next question. The thing that most people don't know about me is... What is something that most people don't know about you? Yeah, Kerry says that she's shy. Most people don't know that because why don't they know that, Kerry? Because you cover it? Yeah, most people don't know that Jody was a makeup artist. <laughs> uh, keep it clean, it's YouTube. Um I think I'd have to say most people don't know that I'm quite quiet. Hi, Roseanne. Yes, I, I, I love, you know, Roseanne saying she loves being alone. People think I'm sad. I'm not. I'm just peaceful. Yeah. And Roseanne, I'm just saying tomorrow we celebrate six years. So uh, of Dear Mama Sal. And I know you were there very close to the beginning. So in the days of blog TV. Yes, Amy, a lot of people wouldn't know that you're half Japanese. Is that the top half or the bottom half? <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it, it's, I, you know what I say to people? I, I, I've said this a lot when I, I, when I was on stage, uh, Kerry. What I've said is, be very aware that the person you think is the most confident person in the room, the one that's always asking the questions, um, the one that's always, uh, you know, uh, front and center, is not necessarily as confident as you think they are. And, you know, it's really interesting how people react to that. And I said the difference is that they don't mind making a fool of themselves. You know, that's why they're always asking questions. Most people don't ask questions a lot because, um, because they fear looking like a fool. Yeah, Aaron's laughing because of Sal being quiet. You know something, Aaron? I go into performer mode quite easily. I, I would like to say the more you know me, the quieter I am. Does that make sense, Aaron? Now, can I talk up a storm anywhere? Yes. But I sort of I get I get into what I call performer mode. And and so people uh really are quite surprised when I'm quiet. Yeah. I would like I think what people also don't know about me is I don't miss a lot. You know what I mean? I I will literally be in a situation and I'll make a comment and somebody will say, How did you know that? I said, Well, I saw what you did earlier. And they're going, What? And the person, yeah, you know, if I'm with somebody, they go, What? And I said, Well, you know, earlier they did this, this, and this, which led me to believe this, this, and this. And and they go, Wow. 
Yes, Aaron, most people don't know that you can be very outspoken when you want to be. And also, you, you, <laughs> you know, that you can be pushed so far and, and then you come out very straight. And, you know, I would like to say that, you know, that that's, for some people, that's actually um, a pretty good thing because they know exactly where they stand. And I think, you know, that's an interesting thing with, a, a, we were talking about this in friendships the other day. I'd far rather have a friend who told me what they really thought as opposed to what they thought I wanted to hear. And so, and, and I try to do that for other people. So I'm really very careful when people ask me questions, I'm saying, are you sure you want me to answer that? Oh, you've seen both sides of me. Okay, Aaron. Yeah. You've seen me laugh until I cry. <laughs> um, but, the, you know, Angela has that effect on me. I must have been. Yes, Tyler's saying he can also be quite emotional. He gets it from his mom. I think uh, a lot of us can be quite emotional. And, and I, you know, the funny thing is, Tyler, I, I think that that being emotional for a guy is, is a big plus. I, I, there are not many women I know that have a problem with a man being emotional. In fact, my experience, and I, it'd be interesting to hear what the women in the room say, but from my experience, women would trust a man more if they were emotional. Isn't that funny? But we'll see what the rest of the room thinks. Hi, Lizzie. No, it's okay. We're asking questions today. Emotional about animals. Yes, I think if you're emotional, you're emotional about all sorts of things, not just not, not just animals. <laughs> By the way, how many of you watch Netflix? Now, what was that movie called? I saw a movie yesterday that is worth watching um, for the romantics um, in the room. What is it called? The Guernsey Literacy, no, Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. That's what it's called, the Guernsey. That's like the island of Guernsey, G-E-G-U-E-R-N-S-E-Y. Um, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Now, it's a heck of a title. So when you see it again, um, you'll, you'll recognize it. But it actually was, what I thought, well worth watching. I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect it to have as many depths to it as it did, but it was pretty darn good. And... So, yes, Lizzie says she cries at, in, you know, happy times, sad times, commercials, you name it, she cries. Right. You know, I haven't watched The Ranch, so that's a good one to know about. Uh, I, 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 by looking at it, I wouldn't have thought it was funny. It's hilarious. Okay, then definitely I will give it a, 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 a shot. All right, so here's my next question of you. What one thing would you like to change about yourself this year? You know, if you could just improve one thing, what would you want to improve? <laughs> Lizzie says that her parents watch their answer and now they swear like sailors. <laughs> Well, thank you for warning me. Nada would like to change her anxiety levels. Great, good. Kerry wants to stop, stop cussing. Yeah, Liz would like to improve her confidence. I presume it's improved, Lizzie, because not many people want their confidence to be less. I want to get more sleep. Amy wants to stop crying at the drop of a hat. 
But um, Amy, let me ask you, do you cry because you feel you're being attacked or do you cry because you're emotional? Now, the reason I ask that is that people cry for different reasons. Yeah, Tyler wants to stop procrastinating as much. I, I now, I must admit, Tyler, I've got a new thing in my plan for each day now. The, the first thing I do is something I'm procrastinating about. I, you know, I literally force myself to start my, my work time with something I'm procrastinating about. And it doesn't matter if I only do 10 minutes. Nada says, I want self-love, self-care more. You want it or you're going to do it. Right? A really, you know, because if we don't do it for ourselves, you lack faith in yourself. That would be because, if you think about it, Lizzie, um, you haven't had many people tell you that you're very talented, right? Ellen says that she'd like to exercise more. So do you exercise already, Ellen? Or, or is it you would like to do some exercise? Right? So are you trying to do more or do some? Yeah, Lizzie, and I think that's the, the difference. You know, if you grew up being told how talented you are, you would have very, very high self-esteem. Yeah, Erin says she'd like to change her anxiety level, all right? she When you say you were taken out of your house, is this when you were taken to hospital? Erin? All right, so so what does it take to, to, ha to improve your self-esteem and to lower your anxiety? Quite honestly, Let's hear some things that you think you might want to do to improve your self-esteem. You know, if you want to stop having as much anxiety, you need to stop thinking as much, right? You need to stop analyzing everything and judging yourself. If you think about it, most anxiety is self-judgment. Yeah, I would say I would say do something every day. Now, for example, Nada, um, if I talk about, you know, did I do anything in downsizing today? My answer would be yes. Even if it was the slightest thing, every day I do one thing. You know, I pack, and today it was very small. I think I packed away about 10 pictures, but I did something. So I feel good about that. Does that make sense? So if anybody said, did you do anything about downsizing today? I can say yes. Um, so to me, it's it's like, think about this. And if did I do anything uh, about exercise today? Nada, I'd have to say no today. I haven't. Um, but yesterday, yes, I did about half an hour of yoga and Tai Chi. And I just literally turned some on on YouTube and started to do it. So it, now, did I go out running? No. But did I do something to exercise my muscles? Yes, I did. And so to me, it's like, you know, don't look for the reason we don't do these things is because we don't think we've got the time. If you haven't got 10 minutes in your day, somewhere in your day, then you're not trying. Does that make sense? You know, Erin, I was thinking even with you and the use of, you know, your one hand, right? You you could exercise that hand and then bring more blood flow to the rest of your body, um, and, you know, if, if you wanted to, right? Yeah, Liz said, I grew up being told I was ungrateful. And even still to this day, when I graduate school, I was told 
I would get a party when I graduated from a real program. Ha ha. My create, oh, you, they'd throw your party when you graduated from a real program. Yeah, creativity was not supported, right? So the fact you were creative went totally unrewarded for you. And it's who you are. Yeah, listen to Amy's thing. My anxiety mostly centers around taking the blame for everything that I didn't do. <laughs> yeah, how many of you relate to that one? That's a good thing to change. Yeah, you know something, Lizzie, and I think it's true of many artistic people that we don't value our art. <laughs> Erin says, I have a psychology degree and you're telling me to stop analyzing everything. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is if you stop analyzing yourself, all right, so much, it's like, who cares? You do. You know what I mean? It's like when you think about it, when you think about your anxiety, most of the time you're scared of how people will treat you or how they will judge you or whatever. And it's like, stop thinking about you. Go out and make somebody else happy. Right? <laughs> Don't make it so self-centered. Um, when I go out, I have to tell you something. I, I know this sounds weird, but when I go out, I go out of my way to make other people smile. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's well, because I feel better when they smile. Um, and, you know, I, I've got friends that just roll their eyes at me because I, I get into so much trouble. <laughs> you know, I do. But it it entertains me. It's like. It's like a personal challenge with me. You know, this person looks like they need a smile. I wonder what I need to do to get them to smile. And then when they do, I feel so rewarded. And so, Lizzie, I look at your creativity, and am I correct that it was the first thing I picked up on with you? <laughs> and I think about that now. That must have been quite a shock, other than your astounding beauty, of course. But... So that must have felt quite strange when I actually acknowledged that early on and continued to. Huh. <laughs> I can make anybody smile. <laughs> no, that's not true. I've made a few cry in my day as well. But, you know, Lizzie, you know, I, I was, had this out today as well. But, you know, I look at this and I go, some people will look at this as highly creative and others will just go, oh, you threw some paint on the thing. So, you know, it was great, actually, yes. Uh, because of, to me, you, that's the one thing I, I have always found about you. You're incredibly creative and I respect that in anybody. It's like Jody is incredibly creative. Um, Nana is incredibly creative, right? I, I, I respect that in people. As much as I respect people, you know, that have other things going for them. So to me, you know, it's just your thing. Yeah, Amy's saying that she and Kim, her husband, you know, act goofy to make people smile. Yeah. But, you know, Jody, I would say your creativity is just an, an add-on because I think your primary talent is, is care. You know, you really do care at a very deep level for, for so many people. And so to me, your creativity, I think, is your gift to yourself. That's, I've always believed that in you. If, if you want to get balanced, you know, get creative – I, and for, for a lot of you, I think that's really important. Yeah. And, you know, Nana probably finds the same thing as well. You know, you can get totally lost in doing that. And, and Lizzie, you know, I think about you and the dog bandanas. How are they going? Yeah, you feel so much better when you make somebody else happy, right? Um, do, you, do you understand that that 
it does me good to come and do the broadcasts. Right? Because it's not just about me. It I may talk about what I'm going through, but it's not just about me. It's about, you know, it's important that 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 you know we share what we know and what we have to offer and our solutions. I, I was busy trying to help um Sakura this afternoon um with her mold situation with her house. You know, this is like I think it's important that, you know, as tired as I am on Fridays, Friday is not a good day to ask me to think because I do two broadcasts and it completely drains me. But I knew that she needed some help on that. And so, you know, between the broadcast, I spent some time. So, you know, you look at it and, and you go, you know, do it because it makes other people happy. But in doing that, you will feel better. Yeah. So anybody else having connection issues? Liz is asking. Yeah. Um, maybe refresh, Liz. I think what I find is sometimes if you don't have the best internet, um, it happens. So sometimes refreshing, it just means that the buffering is getting too much for you, perhaps. Sometimes a quick refresh will do it for you. All right, my next question, and it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, what is your favorite flower? And I've asked this before, and I realize, you know, that I've got a couple of them. Because <laughs> right? I would definitely mention a peony and I would definitely mention a rose. But if I could only have one, if I could only have one, I'd have to pick the rose because because it lasts longer than the peony. Right. So Jody says a hydrangea and an iris. Right. So my my lamp limelight, I think they're called limelight hydrangeas. I love as well. I'm actually gonna have to take. Um, one with me when I move or re replant another one because, you know, I definitely will miss the blooms off my funny enough, I, I like this bloom better than the, the, the blue ones isn't it weird and an iris, that's unusual yeah but again, beautiful coloring Amy likes roses, any particular rose? I, I'm going to, as soon as the rains come, I'm going to be digging up a couple of my roses so that I can take them with me wherever I go. I probably will kill them in the process, but never mind. I'm going to do it anyway. All right, so that's a nice cross-section of flowers, right? We've got hydrangea, iris, rose, peony. Anybody got anything else to add to that? I love, I love crocuses because it tells me spring is on its way. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if crocuses are out, spring can't be that far away. Um, the same as when I, I have a, um, a, what do you call it? A, I wanna say a drooping cherry tree. What do you call that? <laughs> a hanging, no, there's a word for that. Somebody will tell me what it is. Um, I have a, a cherry tree that is shaped like an umbrella. And I I know when that flowers, that's it. Spring is now here. Weeping, thank you. Like a weeping willow. Yep. What did you sell, Amy? Roses. Oh, you used to sell them. Okay. Oh, Ellen says she likes lilac and orchids. Yeah, why did I forget the orchid? Um, it was really weird. When I first started the broadcast, you could actually see the shadow of my orchid here on the wall. And I don't know why it was there when I started the broadcast and now isn't. Yeah, the, uh, lilacs have an incredible smell to them. 
And funny enough, these hydrangeas smell like honey. It's like it's like a honey hydrangea, you know what I mean? It's, it's beautiful. Of course, that you also have to be careful when you pick them because, because they smell like honey, you know bees get attracted to them. Yeah. All right, so here's, and knowing that none of us knows whether we're going to be alive this time next year, if you could travel one more time, where would you like to go? If you could travel just one more time, where would you want to go? Well done, Lizzie. So Liz would like to go to New Zealand. Why? Jody would like to go to Italy. Why? Yeah, Ellen would like to go to Italy as well. Now, what I'm trying to find out is New Zealand is, yeah, Nana would like to go back to England and to Scotland. So I think the reason some people want to go to, in, to Italy would be different from others. All right, Jody wants to go for the pasta. All right, Erin is saying that her favorite flowers are irises, carnations, snapdragons. Snapdragons, that's a nice one. Sunflowers and roses. Okay. You've always wanted to go to Italy because it looks so peaceful. Amy would like to go to Arizona. Yeah, you see, I find it interesting. You would like to go to Italy for the... No, to New Zealand because it looks peaceful. Yeah, actually, you're right. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, Ty, Tyler, I wasn't, I, I actually was so surprised when I went to Hawaii. It actually was one of the few places in my life where it actually was better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I knew it must be nice because everybody talks about it, but it actually was nicer than I expected. The weather was better. Not, you know, I, I thought it would be hotter than it wasn't. Um, yeah, you like to be away from the noise, Liz, yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, I've got a friend of mine who went and loved it. I've got another friend of mine that goes every year. You know, they, they snowbird down to New Zealand. That's interesting. Yeah, so some of you would like to go to Italy for the history, all right? And Capri is beautiful, I hear. Um, so, you know, it's... Yes, for a lot of people want to go to Ireland. The, you know, I think Ireland would be, in the summer, you know, it would be beautiful, you know, when everything's so green and especially if you like a pint or two, <laughs> you know, you, you could spend a lot of time in Ireland just going from pub to pub and have and see some incredible, you know, views and meet some incredibly funny people, that's for sure. Yeah, you can dream, of course. And so to me, it's like I'm, I was trying to think, for some reason, I was trying to think what's still on my bucket list. I've always wanted to go to Belize, and I don't know why. Actually, I do. I remember meeting some people about 30 years ago that wanted to go and start a business there. And I went, where on earth is Belize? <laughs> you know, and I had to literally go and look it up. Um but, you know, it did sound interesting to me, and it still does. There's part of me that goes, I think I ought to go to Jamaica. <laughs> you know, there's part of me that goes, I like the music. Yeah. 
Yeah. Japan would be really interesting to do, but boy, very, very expensive, right? Jody, you've never been to Disneyland. It really it is well worth going, I think. Yeah, my biggest problem when I travel is 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 my problem with food. But you know, I I think I love ginger beer, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so how many of you actually feel happier just thinking about that? Yeah, where would I like to go? Because what I want to show you is just talking about the food, the people, the experience actually lifts your spirits. Have you noticed that? And that's why every now and then I would say at least once a month, you need to ask yourself these questions. Miso paste is, is what they make the Japanese um, miso soup with, I think. That would be my guess, anyway. You're saying the ginger beer in Jamaica isn't as spicy. I used to make my own. Yeah. And it's what they make the miso soup from, right? Yeah. Exactly. Aren't we smart? Very tasty. I know that. Why did you ask, Nana? How do you make ginger beer? Actually, it's it's really quite simple. It's um, I mean, you could look up the recipe, but I seem to remember it's just yeast and sugar. I could be wrong there, Jody. You just look it up, but I. But then, <laughs> but then you have to be a bit careful because you know it does ferment, and and it can. You have to use the right bottles, otherwise it it can break. Um, um, it can break the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, it actually it's it's very easy to make. And it's one of those things where you can keep some to start the next batch. Yeah, pow is the word. If you use corks, you know, the corks are inclined to to pop up the top. <laughs> but it really is very simple to make if you like it. I haven't made it for a long time, but I have made it in Canada at one time. There was about a couple of months of my life where I really craved it. And you know, as you so rightly say, the stuff that they um, uh, the the stuff that they have in the store doesn't taste the same. It's it's not as good, right? Well, that's good. Um, so you should have fun making that recipe, then, Nana. All right. So here's your next question. Let's see where you go with this one. This week. As you are right now, regardless of what you thought yesterday or what you may think tomorrow, if you could meet one person, either living or dead, who would you like to meet? And I would like to, we've already said, Nana, it's very salty. If you've ever had miso soup at, at a Japanese restaurant, you will know. It's not hot, it's not spicy, but it's salty. It's a bit like soy sauce. Yes, interesting. Jody would like to, because you'd like to sit down and just chat with her. What would you like to ask her? Should uh, Jody, for those watching, you are uh, watching on the replay. Jody's saying she'd like to meet Princess Diana. Yeah, and what would you like to ask her, Jody? Anybody else? Who would you like to meet? Somebody doesn't matter, living or dead, who is it you would like to meet and have a discussion with?
Right. Liz is saying she'd like to meet her grandmother on her father's side who passed because everybody says that she's exactly like her. So you'd like to see a mirror of yourself, right? Yeah, Erin would like to go to Hawaii, but then she'd also like to go on a really long cruise. Why don't you do a really long cruise to Hawaii? Nana would like to meet Jesus. Ellen would like to meet her mother. Oh, Amy would like to meet Rick Springfield. Right. Um, what about Dusty? Um Interesting. Yeah, I'm still wondering. I'm still wondering what Jude O'Hecker oh, you you would ask uh, Princess Diana. Yo, know, interesting. I would want to hug her first of all, but then ask her what dream of hers dreams of hers weren't fulfilled, even though she was a princess. So many questions. Yeah, I I keep thinking that about Kate Middleton. You know, talk about a rags to riches story, right? I, I, you can't help but wonder, did she grow up saying, I'd like to be a princess one day? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a little bit like anybody just said, yeah, right. You'll grow out of that. Um, So I think, you know, that's a really, that's a really interesting one. Who would I really like to meet? I didn't, sorry, I meant Megan. You're quite right, Nana. Sorry, I meant, I, I did actually mean Megan Miracle. I am so sorry. No, I, I made a mistake, Nana, and you're quite right to correct me. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I was thinking, though, what an incredible story you know where you know she really did go from from rags to riches sort of stuff and and yet she was so perfectly um trained because of a, a success in in ho in hollywood if you like um to to take that role you know the crowds didn't phase her you know the haters didn't phase her you know she's used to all of that because of her lifestyle you would like to meet certain YouTubers, Kim. Which ones would you like to meet? Which movie did you watch, Nana? Right, has anybody else got anybody that they'd really like to meet? I think for some reason, I'd like to sit down with the Dalai Lama. I, I think that man has a, he strikes me as having not only huge wisdom, but also quite a sense of humor. Yes, Tyler would like to meet Robin Williams. Yeah, he definitely knew about the roller coaster. Yep, absolutely. His life was full of ups and downs. Oh, Ellen would love to meet Benji and the and the family. Yeah. So you and a couple of million. <laughs> yeah, Jody'd like to meet me. <laughs> Well, Nana, you have met me, so that's okay. Yeah, I think, um, you know, or, or how about some of those great comics along with, you know, like John Belushi, I think, would be interesting. Um, you know, what, what really, I would like, actually, you know who I'd like to meet? I'd like to meet Anthony Bourdain and find out what happened. You know, you know, because that was such a shock to everybody. Yeah, it's the same one, the one from Montana, and the hat. 
busy. <laughs> that Tyler. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, Erin liked to meet her biological dad and his family. Yeah. <laughs> I always remember, and you know, it's funny, Tyler. I will always see you in the in in the Doctor Zeus hat. Isn't it strange? Yeah, you see, Liz also remembers the hat. So, the, I guess that was the first time you came on camera. So. I, th I think her mum remarried, Nana. So, next question. As you are today, not yesterday, not tomorrow, as you are today, what is your greatest fear? And still has, Nanish. So what is your greatest fear today? <laughs> he's, and Tyler's saying he still has that hat, for those of you who remember the hat. Yeah. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I, you know, I was trying to think if my greatest fear has changed, and I don't think it has. As some of you know, my greatest fear in life is that I will arrive <laughs> at the pearly gates and that some Peter will say to me, uh, Sal, all right, wait a minute. Is that all you did with all the talent we gave you? I don't know why that is such a fear for me. Okay, so... Uh, something, Jody is scared something bad will happen to Lionel. So, or one of her friends. Um, Amy fears nothing. That's great uh, for her. Yeah, Tyler says death scares him. I, I must admit, death doesn't scare me, but pain does. You know, in other words, I, I don't think dying worries me as much as being in pain and dying worries me. Yeah, Lizzie said losing her loved ones, right. Hi, Juliana. Yeah, you know, you fear that you might not make it to heaven. Or, or what if there isn't a heaven? Yeah, <laughs> heaven forbid. Um, yeah, being homeless worries, yeah. So I think so you know I I look at it and go that we all have fears and they're very real to us and yet what if we had no fear and and so to to me it's like you, you know uh, am I living the sort of life where it is likely that somebody will say, uh, is this all that you did? I, probably not. I, I think that's being unfair to myself. But, you know, it has always been a fear of mine. Yeah, I think, it, you know, something, and that's why I'm saying it's really good to ask these questions sort of on a fairly regular basis because, you know, we need to look at what is my fear today? Is it the same as it was 10 years ago or is it something totally different? I believe that, you know, that, that these things change as we do. All right, so here's the fun one. What makes you laugh the most? Or let me ask you what and or who makes you laugh the most? Yes, Juliana, Al, I agree with you. I believe there's a heaven, but you never know. Right? You have to have faith to know. But what if they're wrong? <laughs> you know, it's like, and how many of you believe in hell? And 
I, I believe hell is here, quite honestly. Um, but that's just my belief system. So what makes you, who, who or what makes you laugh? And why is it a good thing to laugh? Yes, Lionel makes you laugh. I know that. To the point of tears. <laughs> well, Jody, I, I think to be fair, you listen very carefully. When I'm doing vlogs, you listen for the, the throwaway line. I've noticed that. You know, when I made that comment about you wouldn't want to be drunk on this deck or whatever it was that I said about getting drunk on that deck, I knew you'd pick that up. And I bet you a lot of people didn't even hear it. I knew you would get it. And it was so funny because I'm, I literally, I was talking to you as I said it. You wouldn't want to get, get drunk on this one. You know, it's like, you know, take a step back, <laughs> splash. Um, yeah, Liz loves silly humor. Nobody has ever made you laugh as much as Oz, right? I want to tell you that guy made us all laugh until our stomach hurts. All right, so Ellen says that she laughs a lot, and that's a great thing. I, you can't name one thing or person, but you see the, the funny things in life, right? That's a great thing. Kim says she has a fear of, of dying in pain. Yes, I, I must admit that that's high on my list as well. Yes, it's great to laugh because it releases stress. <laughs> yeah, Erin's saying <laughs> you want to be careful what you wish for. You may not want to meet her after you do. Yeah, Erin would know. <laughs> so the blue collar guys, who are they? I don't know of them. You know, I think to be able to go through life seeing humor in things is a wonderful gift. And, you know, the same as I think living with somebody who entertains you uh, is a wonderful gift. Not that it's their job, but it is. I think that there's nothing funnier than to be in a relationship where people make each other laugh, to have a friend who makes you laugh. Um, for some reason, and I, I still don't know why, Angela in Vegas uh, was was a trigger for me. Yeah, she was like the ultimate straight person for me. And she and I, you know, had great difficulty having a straight conversation because we would both see the funny in whatever the other one was saying, as Erin will tell you. Yeah, laughter is the best cure for a lot of things. I think some of you know that I spent um, quite a few years uh, going down to the cancer clinic and, and particularly the brain tumor uh, unit uh, of the cancer clinic, um, just to make people laugh. And the strangest thing was that there was the one time when I went in, when I was due to go in, and I wasn't feeling very funny. You know what I mean? I, I'd, I'd had uh, a relationship go wrong, and I was anything but funny. And the most peculiar thing was, uh, I walked in there and said, okay, fine, you guys, I've been in here six times to make you laugh. It's your turn. And I said to them, you know, this is what's happened to me. And therefore that now it's your turn. And they were wonderful. All right. They took, they took the gift I'd given them and turned it around. And they, they were telling me jokes. And one of the ones I always remember, why doesn't, why doesn't a blind person go skydiving? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. Why doesn't a blind person go skydiving? Because it scares the living daylights out of the dog. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, it's just like, how can you not love them for this? Um, right, Jody's saying she couldn't have made it this far in her journey with chronic illness without daily laughter. Yeah, absolutely. So to me, if you know that laughter is good for you, and by the way, it exercises a whole lot of um, your muscles as well. How many of you make sure you, yeah, watch Jeff Foxworthy or, you know, 
whoever you find funny, that you actually make a point of watching something funny every day. Um, how many of you, as I said, I go out with the intent to make somebody laugh because I know if I make them laugh, I will laugh. And, and that's good for me. So think about that. And this is called, if you want to stop your anxiety, if you want to stop your depression, whatever, do things for other people. And do things that make you laugh. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a really, the golden girls, yes, have, you know, they were so funny because it was so true, all right? I think that's what I believe anyway. I believe whoever wrote for the golden girls really knew um, you really knew their stuff, women-wise. <laughs> um, so to me, you know, it was extremely well written, and and I think that's what made it so funny because, you know, the characterizations were wonderful. Yeah. The 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 little the older lady, Sophia. Yes. <laughs> who 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 needed to pee in the middle of the night and that upset them. <laughs> Boy, I relate to that. I think about her often now. Yes, or how about uh, absolutely fabulous out of the UK with Joanna Lumley? Um, you know, it's like you know that 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 is cry laughing funny. And some of you watch uh, Mrs. Brown's Boys, you know, um, out of the UK. That's also, I mean, where they spend most of the program trying to make each other laugh with a straight face. And it is, you know, I, I, it's worth watching it just to see how they set each other up. And they're using the right lines, but the way that they set it up is, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's like there's so many. I still watch... Do any of you remember, um, and, and this is a guy out of Ireland called Dave Allen. And if you watched him, you would know he had part of a finger missing. And he, he, always, <laughs> he was always on stage drinking a scotch. And you know, he he said the reason he lost put that part of his finger was because it's the bit that always stuck in the in the booze, and it wasn't. But boy, that man was funny. Yes, and so you know, if you know that absolutely fabulous makes you laugh, watch it. You know, make make a point of watching it. So what I'm saying to you is that you control what you watch. Now I spend an awful lot of time watching murder mysteries. I, you know, I just love trying to work it out. You, you know that of me. Um, so, but I also make sure that I spend some time um, watching comedies. Interesting, Eliza John. I didn't know that that all of Mrs. Brown's cast are Irish. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, Brendan O'Carroll is hysterical. I mean, how how he plays that part is beyond me, but but he's so good at it, isn't he? <laughs> so remember, you know, and I would say, you know, have a look at at your week, and you know, do, have you? The Scottish gay guy is is to die for. I love that guy to pieces. I feel so sorry for him because. Mrs. Brown or Brendan O'Carroll picks on him the most because he's the easiest to crack up. What about the daughter? What's her name? Because they, the, the two of them together set up the Scottish guy. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, oh, gosh. When, you know, if the three of them are on camera together, it's going to be, they're going to catch him, and they do all the time. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do is to make you realize you control your life. How much humor have you got in it? Yeah, Erin saying that her worst fear is dying and not remembering the people she loves when she's dying. 
And it's her daddy that makes her laugh the most. Yes, he 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 certainly is a wonderful human being, Aaron. And next time you see him, you give an extra hug from me, please. No, I didn't know that. Mrs. Brown's daughter is his real life wife. Are you serious? No wonder their chemistry is so good. Ha! As you can probably gather that the guy who plays Mrs. Brown is a, is a guy. And the guy who plays Mrs. Brown is a guy. Yeah, very good. So. <laughs> yeah, I th I think it's really important that that we that we understand, you know, what gives us humor. Yeah, uh, you know, Eliza John, I had a I had a big fear, a, a big scare a year ago, literally a year ago where um, it was possible that I had a, a, a pretty bad disease. And what I did, um, was I was actually quite surprised how calm I was about it all because I realized I didn't fear dying. You know, I've lived a great life and I'm really happy with the life that I've lived. It wasn't dying that I feared, it was pain that I feared. And that was quite interesting to me to realize that. But also I was very surprised at how well I managed to get all of that under control really quickly. And, um, you know, just divert my mind. And luckily it didn't turn out to be the way they thought it was. So that's my next question. Now that you know what makes you laugh, please put laughter into your week and your day, if you can. Um, what gives you energy? Wow, Pope Francis is coming to Ireland. Yeah, so... Ah, so Eliza John is actually a male. Well, that's certainly a great enough name to confuse everybody. What gives you energy? <laughs> Tyler's going coffee. Um, and You know, Tyler, for me, it's my second cup, not the first. The first one, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't function on the first one. I have to have the second one before I get any energy. Do, do any of you relate to that? Being outdoors, yes. Right, so you enjoy one of the rooms in Vaughan. Yes, excellent. What gives Jody um, energy is doing something for somebody else. It, it distracts her mind from her own pain and suffering. All right. Amy says sleep gives her energy and cold coffee. Interesting. Yeah, you you spoke to me on Vaughn. So did Tyler and a lot of other people. Actually, you know, Tyler, you did you speak to me on Vaughn as well? Maybe. Um, interesting, Juliana. You say that cooking gives you energy because it's creative and you have achievement at the end of it. I would think. As Lizzie has found out at last that actually getting outside gives her energy. If she can get outside, I always find that, Lizzie. I force myself to go out uh, and shop. Well, I want to tell you, Eliza John, that I am delighted that you ghost. And I'm, I'm, I, if you do it often, we must be doing something that it helps you. Yeah, Ireland's pacifist uh, has been a viewer for quite some time. We always enjoy it. You know, he he always 
adds to the conversation, and I love him for that. Working out gives you energy as well. Yeah. So um, part of what I I found that now that you know, I'm retired, that you know you you realize that getting up every day and going to work every day gave you energy. I, I hate hate to admit that. Because, you know, you had to be out of the house by a certain time. You had to drive to work by a certain time. And then, you know, you really enjoyed lunchtime or whatever. And so there was a certain energy about it. When you retire, um, hi, Jonas, good to see you. You know, when you retire, you don't have those deadlines. And you very quickly fall out of that reality. Oh, island specifics is Sean. Good to know. Hi, Sharon. Good to see you. And we're delighted to see you whenever you can get here. Yes, Liz, right? So when you lost your job, you felt sluggish, right? You didn't really have a reason to get up in the morning. You know, who cares? I find that my, my time clock totally has changed. You're Sean as well? Eliza John? Well, that's okay. All right, Jonas is saying the same thing now that he's done school. All right, now he's noticing. I want to tell you something. My time clock has moved from the normal time clock. I now seem to have a time clock that goes um, somewhere from about 3, three to 4 o'clock in the morning, and then I, I wake up about 10. I mean... So really, it's like ridiculous. Going to work sucks, but working, <laughs> but not working sucks even more. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, it's like, so if you know that, that routine, and I think that's the thing that I realized, routine gives me energy. Wow, you go to bed at eight and get up at four. Wow. Oh, you get a bit of 8 a.m. And yes, exactly. I'm finding that that's my, my natural cycle for some reason. Yes, Lizzie. And that's something you need to know about yourself. You actually are a social person, right? So it's really important for you to get out and be amongst people. Well, Aaron, you give him a big hug from me, honey. That would be wonderful. All right, so on the opposite side of that, what makes you feel sluggish? If you know what makes gives you energy, you probably know what makes you sluggish. Ah, uh, Sean, you make me cry now. Sean, thank you. For those that are listening uh, or watching the replay, um, Sean just said, Sal, I called your show in January of 2016 when I was totally depressed and full of anxiety. You helped a lot. Thank you. Um, Sean, it's the reason that we do what we do. Right? It really is the reason why we do what we do is because we know that we never know the day that somebody's going to need us. And we do find that when people need us, they find us. But I can tell you something else, Sean. You must have done a lot of work on yourself because we all know it takes the work you do for yourself that makes the difference. But I'm delighted that we helped in some way. Yeah, Liz definitely should not play poker. <laughs> All right. Sleeping too much makes me sluggish, says Tyler. Yes, not getting enough sleep makes me sluggish. Yeah, Jody and I know that one. Well, Sean, that, that is really kind of you to say that we remember those who were kind to us in our hour of need. You know, I didn't know it at the time. But for those of you who know Oz, who has made every one of us cry with laughter until we just hurt with laughing, um, 
you know, what amazes me is that when I first met him, he was in a terrible state and I made him laugh. And I still don't know why I never nuked him because, you know, he was so rude to me, but there was something about him that I knew he was being funny. And so I, I really have to say that his gift to the world was how many people he has made laugh. Yes. And yet, you know, it was so funny, but when his world came crushing down, you know, with, with his, his heart problems, he was saying that it was amazing that of all the people he knew, I was still there. Oh, I think he knows, Liz. You <laughs> see, what is that crazy SOB up to? He actually, I don't know if you heard Tyler, but he was in the uh, Indonesia, in Bali, I think, well, just outside Bali, and he ended up having a heart attack. And they had to medevac him. Well, actually, they, they sent him back to Australia uh, with a doctor because, you know, they wanted to make sure he didn't have another one on the flight. Yeah, you know, there are times when it's quite funny because there are times I just write to him and go, so are you still alive? You know. Yes, and Sean, you know, it's interesting that you should say that, that the people that helped you through your tough times were your online friends. You know, and it, that's, you know, I, I hear so many people say, Oh well, you know the your, your online stuff is all fantasy. There's nothing real there, and I'm going. Mm, try telling that to some of my viewers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I'm not talking about me. It's just like the friendships that some of you have made. I certainly, um, yeah. It, it depends whether you are real. If you are real, real on on online, you will meet online friends that are real. I, I believe. I've met quite a few people online uh, over the years, and, and I don't think they have ever surprised me. Right? I, I You know, because when, when I met Leah, she didn't surprise me. When I Actually, I was surprised with Angela because I, I didn't expect her to be as tall as she was. You know, she actually is, you know, quite tall. Um, yeah. In what way, Liz? You know, it's funny because I can actually, you know, when I think about meeting you, you know what I see? I don't know why, Liz, but when, when I think about meeting you, I see myself curled up in a really big, comfortable chair and you and I talking the night away. I don't know why. Wow, Sean, that is so sad that you lost an, uh, an online friend. No, Lizzie, that's what I always felt when I, th I think about meeting you. Yeah, I could totally see it. And God forbid we should have a bottle of wine in the room. You know what I mean? It was just like, I don't know why I could see us doing that. And we'd be quite upset that morning arrived. You know, like, oh, really? Um, I, I don't think we'd run out of conversation very easily. <laughs> and we'd probably laugh and we'd cry a bit. But, you know, we, we'd still carry on. Yeah. So, and, and for that, I thank you. Um, I don't know that I remember Bradley, but I'm sorry to hear that he passed. Yeah, it's, it's funny, Sharon, because um, it was interesting 
that I, you know, I met that one person not so long ago, and and they said, you know, they'd never met me before, and they said, boy, you're intense. <laughs> and I said, oh, really? Um, <laughs> but you know, if you know me, I'm, it, it's, I'm passionate. I'm, if that's intense, I'm, I'm guilty, right? What do I see from looking at your profile picture? Let me think. Uh, I see a sense of humor because you've got your head tilted. There, there's something about the tilt of your head that says you've got a sense of humor to me. All right, Sean, good to see you. And yeah, get some sleep there. Yes, you never thought that you'd be online, right? Or never mind, meet somebody online. It's a pleasure, Sean. You, 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 I'm sure you give back to others everything that you've received. And so here is, I, I still have some more questions, but I will keep them for another day. But the, the reason I wanted to ask you these questions is because I wanted you to feel did any of you find that just answering the questions made a difference to your evening? How many of you automatically started to laugh as soon as we mentioned Oz, right? For those of you who met him, you cannot help but laugh when you hear his name. Um, you know, so I look at it, or Tyler, you know, who, who was with us all those year, years ago. Um, or Sean, you know, so you look at it and you go, remember what makes you feel good. Made you feel kind of relaxed, right? And one of the things I've noticed is that my blood pressure has dropped during the course of, or my heart rate has dropped during the course of the broadcast. Yes, Lizzie, it made you smile that everybody that we used to see is actually still around, right? For those of us who've been around for six years or nearly that long, all right? And so I look at Erin and Nana and, 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 you know, all of you, and you do realize that, that you are part of the reason why we lasted six years, that each of you has brought your own, right, brought your own magic to it. Ah, Lizzie, that's so nice. Liz is saying, I was having an off week and, you know, I thought, I'm going to Sal's cast. It makes me feel better. No, you make yourself feel better. I don't know why. <laughs> but it is the reason why we continue to do the work. And I say that because we keep talking a, a lot of the same stuff, but just with different people. Have you noticed that? And it's just like, and, and I keep looking at the things that happen to you, and I keep turning the mirror and going, where is that happening in my life? And if I get a sense of humor, most of the time I can see it in my own life as well. And so part of what I really wanted to do is to thank you all. What makes us special, I believe, what makes us um, so important and relevant uh, is that we actually do have a sense of humor, that, that we, we can laugh at ourselves, that we do give energy to others. We are not perfect, but we care. And so what I wanted to say is thank you, all right? Thank you for allowing me into your lives. And thank you for sharing your lives with others. Thank you for supporting all the people you've supported. And hopefully, we will still be here in another six years and still be helping people. Because I'm pretty sure every one of you has a memory of either laughing so hard that you thought you were going to die from laughter or from crying, listening to somebody's story or for just going, wow, I'm, I, I had no idea about that illness. I know so much more. You know, so I look at all these things and go, we didn't do this in isolation. We did it together. 
So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here. For some of you, thank you for being here for nearly the whole journey. But most of all, let's do everything we can to keep it going so we can continue to help people, those that want to help themselves. Because we are all aware that we are the ones that help ourselves. You know, we, we can come in here and we can talk as much as we like. But the truth is we need to do things to make ourselves happy. We need to do things to give ourselves energy. And most of all, we need to help one another do that when our friends are feeling down. So here's a big hug to you all. And remember that. All it took was a friend, that being Benji, to say, I want to share you with the world. That's what he said. And so it just took his one gesture to make this happen. Well, Aaron, he... A drop down is a good thing, right? Bear hugs to you too, Tyler. Thank you. Yes, Aaron, I agree with you. You have memories of laughing hard and crying hard, right? And so do I. Yeah. So I wanted to just thank you, but most of all, I wanted to thank Benji. Uh, and you know, I do thank him quite regularly. And whenever I get, you know, one of those emails from somebody that says, you know, I, and the story that Sean was telling tonight, I, I will pass on to Benji because what I remind him of is I would never have got that feedback had he not pressed the button at 10.35 on July the 25th. You understand, if he hadn't done that, I wouldn't have learned how to be a YouTuber, and then I, I wouldn't have learned how to be a caster. And so I never forget who started this, and I am forever grateful. By the way, did you guys see that they're coming out with a book next month? So just so that you know. All right, so big hugs to you all. Thank you all. Have a great Saturday. I will see some of you on Sunday and where we will be doing our soul work Sunday, and I'm looking forward to that. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for being part of my life. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, look after one another, but most of all, remember, look after yourself. Bye-bye for now.